So This Is Love, by Four Curious Dad, on AO3. Episode 2, Chapter 2, Sarah Hanta is in love? Since the day he met Todoroki at the manga shop, Sarah Hanta hasn't been feeling okay at all. You're in love, Mina concluded. They were sitting together in the UA's cafeteria for lunch. Kaminari Denki, Kirishima Ijiro, Ashiro Mina, and Sarah Hanta. There was Bakugo Katsuki, but he had already finished his meal, leaving those four extras behind, now that they were gossiping about Sarah's love life. Mina's conclusion made the boys, Kaminari and Kirishima, laugh so hard while Sarah was confused, glancing back and forth between Mina and the boys. Sarah has a lover. Kaminari pokes Sarah's face. Who would have thought? Our little Sarah has grown up now. Big bro Dinky gonna help you. Now spill. Who is she? That's not very manly of you, Kaminari. Leave him alone. But yes, tell us more about her. You dumbasses. Isn't it so clear? Remember when he was texting under the table during classes? Not to mention it was Aizawa Sensei's class? He had the guts to do it. And he considerably brings up that friend he talks to time after time. My friend likes this, my friend likes that, and none of you pay attention. He was always so eager to get out as soon as class ended. Sometimes he even skipped our, our invitations to hang out. Was it for going home though, Saro? Ashiro raised one of her eyebrows with a smirk. She was determined to get the answer out of the tape boy. Sarah felt so much pressure from her look. And now even Kamanari and Kirishima shut up and turned their attention to Sarah. Suddenly, he felt so nervous his mouth turned dry. Was it okay to tell them? It was not like he had to hide, but still. Was it okay? No, it wasn't. I went to meet up my friend. Doesn't that mean you guys are really close friends? But man... Lucky you, got a girl who loves the type of manga like yours? Kaminari clicked his tongue. Shut up, Pikachu. Not a close friend, I'm pretty sure. Now, tell us. What do you feel when you guys met? What did he feel? Oh, how could he describe it? He felt sad when they had to say goodbye. He felt anxious when he sends a text. Then he immediately feels restless while waiting for a reply. He felt excited to the point he could hardly sleep during the day before their meetings. Sometimes he felt shy and worried that he would look so untidy and uncool, even in his best cool, casual clothes that took him two hours to pick out. He felt like, like you have a crush? Ashido said, and what do you want to do with your friend? Do you want to do anything else? Besides reading manga together and talking? Ooh, tell us. Kaminari jumped right in and received a smack on his head by Mina. What did he want to do? He was happy with what they were having now. Talking together day after day, meeting at places or walking around the city, chatting about this arc and that character, etc. But it would be nice if they could be closer. He was curious to know how the boy would react when he suddenly would hold his hand. Would he be jumpy? Would his face turn red when there was a finger gently stroking his palm? Would his eyes become fluttery and awkwardly look away? Would he just stop walking and ask, what are you doing? Bet all of it would be so lovely. Would it be a perfect time to lean in for a kiss? Stop, Saro. You said you wanted to kiss your friend? Mina says. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Just like that, Saro could confidently call what he felt now. Love. The moment he came to realization, everything made sense. He didn't have a good impression for a friend, whether it was with Shoto's calm manners of speaking when he didn't understand the metaphor in his joke, or it was Shoto's greediness slurping of the rest of the soba. He loved all of Todoroki's reactions. He found all of his actions so interesting, no matter how clumsy it was. He loved Todoroki. 
That was very manly of you, Sarah. To declare your love out loud, you have my respect. I'm very glad for you. Let's do it like a man. Steal her heart and make her your girlfriend. Hiroshima smacked Sarah's back after every sentence. Luckily, he didn't use his cork, or else Sarah would have to stay at home for days to heal his back. I never said it was a girl. He never said it was a girl. At the same time, Sarah and Mina said. The boys were so stunned, while Sarah and Mina found the reaction very interesting. Well, that wasn't a problem. A man has to respect his friend's choice and partner, whatever their gender is. Of course, I won't stand still if they hurt you. Hiroshima declared. Can you ask him to introduce me to someone? I want to have a girlfriend during high school. Can you ask? Please, ask for this big bro dinky. Sarah couldn't hear anything. He was drunk in the happiness of his own discovery. Nevertheless, he still remembered to make sure these three swore to keep silent, not to tell a single word to others in the 1A class. He didn't want to be teased all the time, or being asked about how it was with his crush. He was shy, and he wanted to keep it to himself, to enjoy it for a while. At least. During this time, like Hiroshima said, do it like a man, steal his heart, and make him his boyfriend. For that, he needed a plan. So Inspector Ashido became Advisor Ashido, helping him steal young Todoroki's heart. To make your friend feel the same as you, you have to treat him well, okay? And make him realize your existence. Now, you guys meet like two or three times a week? Double it up. Meet as many days as you can. Best strategy, distance first, speed second. As long as you guys meet up a lot, he will be used to having you around. That is your first victory. And so, Saro started to ask Todoroki to meet him more. Normally, they would meet sometime after school. But for Saro's and Mina's plan, they would also meet on weekends. Saro used whatever reason he could come up with. From going to a new manga shop, to looking for his merch on streets. Todoroki would always accept his invitation without hesitation, making Saro feel happy and <laughs> grinning all day. Man, you should tone it down, Kaminari told him after he was forced to witness another silly grin of Saro's, even after he was smacked by Bakugo's flying fists during a battle trial. Saro started to run out of suggestions, places to go, until there was a new manga cafe, so he asked Todoroki to check it out with him, on a beautiful Sunday. So the day came. Sarah was so anxious. This was not the first time they went to a coffee shop together. But still, every time he met Todoroki, especially after his realization, Sarah would get butterflies. He found himself thinking about this cutie more, especially wanting to hold his hand, to lean in to steal a kiss. But also, he was worried he might send too much mixed signals for the boy. That might disturb him, stuttering whenever he clumsily praised Todoroki's outfit or his trembling hands when he handed over something to him. But Todoroki still said yes and got to the meeting places on time, making Sarah relieved, but also a little gloomy. Hadn't I shown enough of my interest to him? Hadn't he noticed anything? Was I not good enough? At the corner of the manga cafe, there was two boys sitting face to face, quietly reading the manga and sipping their drinks. That was what it looked like and felt like for people who saw it. And Todoroki. Because for Sero, it was torturing, but also splendid. He awkwardly glanced from his manga to Todoroki's calm face, focuses on his torquoid and dark gray eyes, trailing down to his lip where there was a small stain of iced coffee that he really wanted to wipe away for Todoroki. Then sneakily, hid his staring back behind the manga he was holding, waiting for a moment to repeat his routine. Todoroki was so focused on reading that, he didn't realize that there was no turning page sound for a very long time from the boy sitting opposite. But Saro didn't mind. He liked what he saw right now, a very focused and attractive Todoroki in his own words. He wished that he could keep going on like this all day but he also wished that he could get the boy's attention to mess with him a little bit 
hoping to see him jump or fluttering with his joke, to make him like him more. Suddenly, the moment was interrupted by a ringtone. Sorry, it's mine. Todoroki put down the manga and took out his phone. He looked at the screen for the contact, turned it off immediately, and tucked it away in his pocket. No problem, but may I ask who it was? Who made you frown like that? Sarah wondered. It was, well, my father. He wants my confirmation about attending this upcoming event. What is it? Do you mind telling me? Not big deal. He wants me to attend UA Sports Festa with him next week. Ah, yes, UA Sports Festival. Wait, what? You will go to the UA Sports Festival? No, me and my dad. We will go to the UA Sports Festival. You and your dad, the number two hero, will go to UA? Saro asked in disbelief, but that put Todoroki in confusion. Which part or what part of his statement made Saro's misunderstanding? Yes, he wants to show me what I missed out for not enrolling in UA. It isn't how it works, though, as far as I know. The first-year students are the ones who perform their skills. Now that we're talking about it, you will be there too, right? Huh? Uh, yeah, of course I am. Sarah popped out his statue, a surprise to answer Todoroki. Then that's cool. Todoroki closed the manga. I'll be there cheering you on. Do your best, hero. He slurped the leftover iced coffee, leaving Sarah in a daze and terrified. The next day, Sarah rushed into the classroom, grabbed his advisor, and dragged her to a twinkling zone in the school, far from the rest of the class, where they could talk. Of course, Kirishima and Kawanari asked to follow. Men stick together. Then it was panic. He told them how the date was. To Saro, yes, it was a lover type of date. And how Todoroki would come to see him in the UA Sports Festival next week. What do I do now, Mina? He's coming! Here! He will see me race and fight with the other kids. I will be a huge mess, looking dirty and struggling and... Man, I will look ridiculous! Nonsense! A man's honor and in his most noble moments is when he's fighting. Kirishima rolled his sleeves to show his muscle as an illustration of his belief. This is the time to show your partner how strong and cool you are. Show him you are truly a hero. I agree with Kirishima, Saro. This is a good chance to show off your advantage, your strength. Won't that be nice when he sees how strong and talented you are? And he will fall harder for you. Ashido tried her best to calm a rarity freak out, Saro. And when he's impressed by your hero action, bam! He will say, I love you, in no time. I'm not done yet, Kaminari. And to be honest, all you tell us is how you guys became manga buddies. Don't you think it's a little too... little? I mean, it's a single hobby, and you don't get to learn a lot about him. Dating is to learn and understand each other, so you must show him who you are. And also, look into his world, too. Don't just play safe at your card and stay in your comfort zone anymore. The squad agreed that UA Sports Festival was indeed a good occasion for Saro to prove himself, to boost his image in Todoroki's impression. A part of Saro agreed with them, but another part was terrified. This was the first time he felt this way. But why? He was attending UA, one of the best heroics education programs in Japan. He was in Class 1A, which belonged to the Department of Heroes, not to mention it was the best class in the world. He also had a great and super versatile quirk, tape. It allowed him to do long range and support combat, and move around or secure the enemy. Sometimes he even showed off his quirk to his friends, because he knew it was cool. He knew his strengths and limitations of his own quirk. It wasn't as flashy as Bakugo's, or as impressive as Ida's, or not even as strong as Kirishima's, but he was determined to focus on getting better and using his quirk and leaving an impression or comments on others about his quirk. But he couldn't help but feel a little bit self-conscious and doubt his abilities, especially when compared to Todoroki's quirk. They were a family of using fire quirks, not to mention 
Shoto Todoroki could even use ice. In a fight, he would be smashed in the short time. He didn't want to feel or think this way, but he couldn't stop. He wanted to appear strong and invincible in front of the boy he liked, but he also doubted and was scared that he wasn't strong enough. More important, his father, the number two hero, would be there too. What if he fucked up and made the hero upset so he would forbid him to contact his son? Or maybe the hero would tell him he was too weak to think about talking to their family. And even if he was confident and strong enough, would his son fall in love with him? Would the father agree with them being in a relationship? I forgot to mention, and I mean his father will be there too. Oh my goodness. How does it feel to meet the in-laws? Kaminari busted into laughter, leading both Mina and Kirishima smacking his head after seeing Saru's face turn whiter than he usually was. And so, despite Saru's worries, or Todoroki's excitement, sooner or later, the day for the UA Sports Festival had arrived. Y'all, let's go. I slept all day today. That was not literally okay. I went to work and then I came back from work and then I passed out and then I woke up and then I'm here recording and then I'm gonna pass out again just to go to work. <laughs> Jesus Christ. My work isn't even demanding. I haven't even been doing anything. It's just standing. L literally, it's not a, like a hard labor job. I'm just sitting there and telling people about phones and stuff, right? It's I look. <laughs> I'm tired, okay? I'm tired, all right? You know, no, it is hard job because I have to socialize with people, okay? People can be mean. People can be assholes. Anyways, moving on. I think this was an interesting chapter. I mean, clearly, Saro is very much, you know, already feeling, having feelings for uh, Todoroki. So this is moving a lot faster than I thought it would. Um, I, I saw slow burn. It might not be that much of a slow burn. Maybe it's slow burn not to feelings, but them actually getting together. Again, there's different types of sub, uh, slow burns. There's slow burn feeling, slow burn relationship, slow burn both, slow burn, uh, slow, bo slow burn pacing, and slow burn, burn timing. I can't, mmm, slow burn. Uh, my lisp is acting up today, and I'm sorry if I got a lot of uh, syllables wrong while reading that. That would be my bad. Um, today my lisp is eating my fucking ass, alright? Today, my tongue hates me. Today, uh, I can't speak. But, um, yeah, as I said, there's different types of slow burns. There is, uh, l l let's talk about the basics. So, so the big, when somebody thinks slow burn, they think that the couple get together at the very fucking end right? And that they realize feelings for each other towards the middle, right? That's the typical quote-unquote slow burn, right? Uh, there is different categories to slow burn in my mind. There is uh, emotional slow burn and then relationship slow burn. Emotional slow burn, which almost always translates into relational slow burn, right? Uh, emotional slow burn means that it is it, it's a slow burn for the characters to catch feelings and realize that they have caught feelings, right? So this would be like Hawks lays an egg, right? That was emotional slow burn. And partially because it was emotional slow burn, it was also relational slow burn. Relational slow burn just means it takes them a while to, you know, get feelings. Every emotional slow burn, slow burn will almost always be uh, a relationship slow burn as well, but not every relationship slur slow bur bur mm. not every relationship slow burn will be a feeling slow burn, right? It could be that the characters started feeling feelings for each other towards kind of quickly. They already had established feelings, or the feelings develop quite quickly for one or both of the pair. But it takes them a while to express said feelings to the other pair, and for them to get together right? Uh, think will they, won't they, right? Think idiots in love, uh, idiots, uh, idiots in love, no, idiots to lovers, think, yeah, think idiots to lovers, uh, mutual pining, you know, things like that, right? Uh, that's the typical and what you think of a slow burn. Then there is the second category, which is the actual pacing of this, which is slow burn pacing and slow burn timing. Slow burn pacing means they get together at the end of the story, right? And then slow burn timing is how long it takes for them to actually get together, re uh, regardless of when they get together 
in the story, time-wise. So pacing is at the end of the story they get together. Regardless if, you know, from chapter one to chapter 20 when they get together, it's only been three days, that would still be considered a slow burn because it takes 20 chapters to get them to get together. And then time slow burn would be like, okay, chapter one and then they get together at chapter five. But there is a whole one year gap between chapter one and chapter five. Like it discovers a whole year. It goes, it passes, right? It's long, it's lengthy, whatever. Uh, it doesn't even have to be long and lengthy. It's just like, it's time between chapter one and chapter when they got together. Uh, although the number seems little, timing wise in the actual story timeline, it's a slow burn, right? Sorry, I'm, I'm lecturing you guys on slow burns. It's not as bad as when I lecture people on other tags. I am fluent in tags. Actually, I, dude, when I got together with my partner, I think the first thing I said was, okay, you're going to college, therefore, does, do we qualify for college AU? I know we qualify for idiots to lovers. I was like talking about our quote unquote qualifications, which our qualifications are um, fluff, enemies to lovers. No, hold up. Why did I say that one? That, no. No, fluff, mutual pining, idiots to lovers, not enemies to lovers, idiots to lovers, squared, squared, slow burn, college AU, technically, content creation AU. That's a big one. Um, sorry, uh, boss texted me. I'm, I'm pretty sure, I think. Uh... I'll look at that in a minute. I'll look at that in a minute. I'll actually have to check some shit. I'm, I'm going in my email. I should have completed everything. I really hope I did complete everything. I got a reply back from who? Uh, Butterfly Apocalypse. Oh my God, I just got approved. Oh my God, let's go. Oh wait, hold up. Since these chapters still haven't uploaded, I very much can just insert. Oh my God, I can't. Oh my god, that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, uh, I just realized that you guys are gonna get this a whole lot later, at a later date, than what you expected. Okay, well, anyways, as always, my and Josh, make sure to eat, sleep, drink water, take your meds, have a wonderful day or night. Link to my Discord server and socials are down in the description. Subscribe to see more of my content, and thank you so much for watching.